What is up everyone on YouTube and today we're going to be looking at the new ML4 star unit Wandering Prince Sid who is drawing graffiti with his quill and his book I guess and because he's using a book you can see that he is a mage, a light mage so we have dark Sid already now we have light Sid. I believe Smilegate will probably go and give a light and dark version to every 4 star unit in the game possibly even 5 stars in the future we don't really know yet but this unit looks amazing. Uh, like his artwork and his animations don't even really look like they're from Epic 7. It looks kind of above the level that Epic 7 is usually used to in terms of, of design, which is pretty hard to imagine because their designs are already pretty decent. But you're gonna see like even in this character lobby screen, like it doesn't really fit in with the other ones. He looks a little bit more like shinier. I don't know how to say it. Uh, kind of more like fantasy out of like Final Fantasy something, you know. Um, but he looks amazing. He is holding machetes, which is funny. Uh, he, because he's a mage, but okay, I guess like a mage that wields machetes for some reason. But if you look at his stats here, you're going to see he has effectiveness in his imprint concentration, so he will have debuffs. He has a lot of speed, and he has pretty decent attack, not the highest, um, but he is very quick. So you're going to notice that he's going to be a very good unit if you can make him fast enough if we look at his skills. So let's actually look at his skills first. Uh, let's look at his S2. It's a passive, right? So after an ally attacks with an AoE attack or an attack that targets all enemies, he will activate Continuous Strike, which has a three turn cooldown. Now, Continuous Strike will attack one enemy, decreasing combat readiness by 20%, and then also increase combat readiness of the ally with the highest com combat readiness except for the caster by 20%. So, it's a lot of words. Basically, how this works is if you have an ally before him, use an AoE attack. That doesn't really have to be before him actually just whenever uh, if your continuous strike is off cooldown you will attack the enemy side unit with the highest combat readiness so the one that will go next and then decrease their cr and then buff your ally that has the highest cr uh, by 20 percent cr so it's a lot of words but you'll understand you'll understand how it works if you look at the um, description here so we have blooming lydica use her aoe attack here and what happens is after the cr pushback which was from blooming lydica you can see sid Hits Politus here because Politus is next in line from the enemy side. It will push her CR back by 20%. And then Blooming Lydica, who was next in line on our team, gets pushed up by 20% so she can take the next turn instantly. So that is how it works. Pretty strong ability, uh, mostly because it's a passive, so you don't really have to like use it. You basically just sit there and then you can CR push an ally and then CR push back an enemy. Um, an enemy. And it, the damage isn't that great, but you're going to see the damage is going to come... Uh, mostly from his S3. So this is his S3. It is an AoE bomb on all enemies and decreased speed. And then at the end of your turn, you'll detonate those bombs. That's it. Very short, but very effective and honestly pretty OP. Now bombs, when they detonate, they stun. And if you have decreased speed as well, they're going to be stunned for a very, very long time. Also, if you have something on your team to give your team like speed buff, like, I don't know, green landy if you play aggressive landy or like Lua even, you're going to lap the enemy like three times if you get this off with a speed buff on your side, which is pretty insane. And the reason why this is so strong is because it's a non-attack bomb skill. So you don't have to worry about counterattacks at all. You can see it didn't attack, right? They have uh, Aiden and they also have Abyss Ufine and they're not able to counter because of this. Navy Captain Landy won't either. And then afterwards they get stunned. And as you can see, Savior Aiden takes the full damage because of the fact that she couldn't evade because nothing hit her, right? It's a non-attack skill. And you can see the damage here is pretty insane, right? We have 17k to Crimson Armin. She has all that mitigation, probably from Aureus. We have 8k on Abyss Ufine, and then we have the uh, Saver Aiden taking about 5k here. But the biggest thing is the decreased speed. So you can see the CR bar here, um, decreased speed and stun. Look at the CR bar. Basically, by the time these guys take a turn, the left side would have taken like two or three turns and killed them all. So this is pretty strong. Now, because it's a non-attack skill, it'll get countered by stuff like Fire Politis, or also even Green Selene, but you know, outside of that, this looks pretty insane. Those two units, Politis and Selene, they've always been good into all cleavers, but if you have like a Ran on your side to activate his S2, Ran gives your team immunity buffs, so Politis can't really do anything. Uh, if you have a way to actually snipe out the um, Selene before you actually use an AoE attack and then have Sid use his S3, you can deal with her. So there's, there's a lot of ways to actually counter cleave, honestly. Uh, but there's also ways to counter the counters to cleave. So this S3 looks pretty insane. Um, yeah, it just is going to destroy the Sufines, you know, save your Aidens. My Navy Captain Landys can't get stunned, but still you can, uh, you know, 
do the damage and stuff like that. And he's going to work very well with other bomb units. Maybe Roaming Warrior Leo in like Summertime Assyria will make a good comeback. We'll see. Next we have his S1. So it's a single target attack and it's a defense break. Nothing too fancy. If you soul burn it, the defense break gets to two turns and the chance goes up to 100%. And you're going to see that, yeah, 2k damage on a crit. So his damage isn't really that high, but it does land the defense break. So honestly, this unit looks more like a support unit. He doesn't have effectiveness built into his awakenings, which is pretty terrible, honestly, because I think you definitely want him on super high effectiveness, mostly because this continuous strike will get affected by effectiveness as well. So you want to make sure you land this and actually, you know, push back the enemy opener. Usually the enemy openers won't have effect resist anyways, but let's say in the case you go against like a Moon Bunny Dominion with high ER, like, you know, 160% plus. If your light state is at like 200%, he has a chance to actually push her back. And then also because of the fact of his S3, you definitely want this to land. This is super strong. Basically, if you don't get your S3 off, you don't land it. He's pretty useless. So you definitely want to make sure he's on high effectiveness and high speed. I think those are the only two stats you really need on him for what it looks like. Everything else is probably just going to be a bonus. Now, I think this unit will be pretty strong for RTA, Guild Wars offense, regular arena. He looks like a pretty strong cleave unit. I don't think you'll use him anywhere outside of cleave. Um, the biggest problem is you need him to be high speed and high effectiveness. So you're going to have to actually mix and match your stats. Now you don't have to make him the fastest on your team just because he's not really an opener, right? You don't really need him to go first. You just need him to, you know, be able to push back the enemy opener and then push up your ally. And maybe your, that ally can, you know, make, make it so that you can get pushed up, right? So for example, what you can do is run him with Ran, Ran S3s and then Sid will push back someone for the Ran, and then Summertime Asiri, if you have him or have her with your Ran and Sid, she will push up, put bombs on everyone, and then you know you have double bombs galore AoE. So there's a lot of ways to make him work. He's not an opener, but he does assist your opener, and he's very good with openers that do a lot of AoE damage, but don't have a way to CR push back or CR push up your team, if that makes sense. So basically, he's going to be Ran, um, Ran's best friend, what it looks like Requiem Rowana is going to be very, very good with him. A lot of units with AoE that are good in Cleave that he will be very effective with. Now, I'm mostly going to pull for him because of his animation. Like, it looks crazy. Like, where is it? This looks insane. Uh, honestly, I'm not going to, like, pity him, but I'm probably going to pull in this banner. He's going to be running with Navy Captain Landy, Pirate Captain Flan, Little Queen Charlotte, and Martial Artist Ken. All of those four are pretty decent. Some of them are like OP, maybe Captain Landy, cough, cough. Uh, so you definitely want to pull on their banner anyways. If you get Light Sid though, it's definitely a treat because he looks very strong in cleave comps. And as you can see, he'll be available on May 2nd with those units that I mentioned on those banners. And if you guys want to check out the combat demo, I'm not going to have it on this video. But what you guys can actually do is check out Epic 7's official channel on YouTube. You'll be able to see the combat demo there. But basically, this unit looks... Pretty insane, right? You can see um, Politis puts the, what's it called, Rage buff up for your team. So that's basically a speed buff. And then afterwards, Pirate Captain Flan, S3 is here. And you can see she'll put bombs on everyone. And then you'll see what happens. Sid uses his S2. And basically, he's going to detonate these all. And you're going to see that this is going to do a ton of damage because he puts bombs up for himself onto the enemy side, so there'll be two bombs with Pirate Captain Flans total, and he also has the Rage buff to do more damage, and bam. Yeah, honestly, you don't even need spes for this. You can literally just wait for your team to cycle. They have the Rage buff, right? And then the enemy team speed down, so you'll lap them over and over. I'm just kind of curious to see how fast he laps. So like, he kills Laia, right? And people just keep lapping and lapping. Yeah, like they don't even get a turn off. Like this Abyssal Fina is still stunned, and his team or her team is like all dead. So you can kind of see what this unit is going to do. Basically just opens up a lot of options for Cleave and it looks pretty powerful. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for him, what you guys think about his kit. I personally think he's going to be pretty strong for Cleavers and I'm not excited to um, play against him. I guess I'm just going to ban him or pick Politics or Selene into him, but he does have counters, but I think for Arena offense, Guild Wars offense, uh, for Cleavers, he's going to be super strong.